Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for joining me today. Today we are going to be doing a really fun video. So if you're new here, this is like the perfect video. It is all of your questions answered. I get asked questions every day. I've been compiling a list for this video to talk to you guys about, giving you some of the answers to the most frequently asked questions that I get. So let's just go ahead, dive in and get started. All right, so let's just go ahead and dive in. I've got a list of questions that I've been compiling for about a month now. These are a lot of the frequently asked questions and the most popular questions that I get asked. So the first question that I get asked probably the most, and I'm not going to give you an answer to it today, but I'm going to tell you the question. And then I'm going to go ahead and tell you a question that's probably the second most frequently one. And I will answer that. The first and foremost question that I get asked all the time is how much money do I make doing this? Well, that's kind of a personal thing. I wouldn't even ask my friend, what do you make? It's just not something you ask somebody. So no, am I gonna disclose to you what my annual income is doing this? No, but what I will tell you is, the next question is, is this a sustainable type of business that I can make a good living at and make money at? The answer is yes. I'm not trying to hide anything, but giving you my personal income is just kind of something that is not something I'm gonna share with you guys. What I will tell you is the next question. How much is your average profit per piece? That depends. So I can't give you a straightforward 50%, 75% because each piece does vary. Smaller pieces have smaller profits. The larger pieces, the more valuable pieces have larger profits. Just to give you a for instance, I can buy a nine drawer dresser, let's just say for $100 off of Facebook Marketplace. After I put in my time and my material, I can go ahead and sell a painted dresser with a stained top between $495 and $600. Now I know there's a range there, but that's because it's quality, it's type of wood that it is, it's maybe the brand that it is, it can also be the age that it is. So. There are some variations as to how much profit you can make on each piece. So there isn't a hard and fast answer that I can tell you every single piece I make a certain amount. When I first started, most important to me was if I can double my money, I'm good to go. Well, I'm so far past that now, but I've been doing this for almost seven years as well. So, you know, things change as you progress in your business. So yes, you can make a sustainable, steady living doing this, which leads me to my next question. How many pieces do you turn a month? I average about 25 to 30. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I do this full time. So if you're doing this part time or as a hobby, you can't compare yourself to somebody who does it full time. I'm out here pretty much six days a week painting. One reason, I love what I do. Um, another reason is that yes, I am my own business. So if I don't work, I don't make money. The majority of my business has become from custom work. I do buy and sell. Uh, I do have my own inventory, but it's very little. And usually it sells out so fast, I can't keep inventory in. So um, the majority of my work does come from doing custom work for clients. But yes, I turn about 25 to 30. I have had people question me and say, there's no way. Absolutely, there's a way. And what they did was, I actually just had somebody do this. They went back on my Instagram three months in a row and counted how many pieces I post. Now keep in mind, I don't post every single piece. There are some pieces like giant china hutches or maybe a bed that I did and I just can't stage it on my staging area. Anyway, I had um, I had actually had two people contact me and say, oh my God, I just went back three months and you're right. Well, yeah, I'm not gonna lie about that. There's no reason to do that. So I turn about 25 to 30 pieces a month and like I said, it ranges from small pieces, custom pieces, pieces like this one behind me. It just depends. Next question, how long have I been doing this? Well, I already kind of answered that one. Almost seven years. Um, I started as a hobby, just bought something off of Craigslist, fixed it up, painted it, sold it that weekend. After that, I was hooked. I knew this was something I wanted to do. Now I did it in addition to my full-time job that I was had been at for 18 years. I did work from home, so I had a little more flexibility. Being able to come out into the garage and do the work in between 
um, doing my other work. However, about two years ago, I decided I was going to take this business full time and I retired from my 18 year career. What did I do before? Absolutely nothing did I do before I was painting. I was a real estate appraiser. I worked with my dad for 18 years. Um, we did fire loss for insurance companies. 100% opposite of doing anything creative. It was a very analytical job. So this has been something that was a complete turn and something different for me. Um, was it scary to go ahead and quit my regular day job? Absolutely. But I always had the notion that if it didn't work out, I would find something else. I'm kind of one of those people that, <laughs> hey, I need a job, I'll go get a job for money. But it wasn't about, I wasn't scared to do it because of that. I was just excited and nervous. And taking a leap of faith and doing something new is always a little frightening. Do I need a business license to do this? You don't need one. Should you get one? Yeah, everybody's um, government ordinances are different though. So I can't give you the exact how to, where do you go, but um, I am a registered licensed business with my city. Uh, I went through all of the things to figure out how to do that, went down to my local government, applied for the license, had to do the fictitious business name statement. Um, how did I pick my business name? It was one of those things that just, my husband and I have a very rustic flair, as you can tell by my staging area. The majority of my house looks like that inside too. Um, I grew up in a very small town and you know how kids are, you're always running in and out of the house and you know, the statement was kind of made, hey, were you born in a barn? You know, cause you'd leave the door open or you'd leave things laying around. And then I started using that with my kids and it just kind of became something that I thought, what a cute business name, born in a barn. So one of the things I'm gonna tell you on all these things, like the business license, and the next thing is, do you need insurance? These are things that you need to think about later, after you really take this into a legitimate business and do, you're doing this full time. These are things you will probably want to talk about and get some ideas on what things cost. Do you need different insurance? Things like that. Um, if you're doing things out of your home, again, I'm not an insurance person, but what I can tell you is I would definitely talk to your insurance agent and find out what your options are. There are business insurances, there are different types types of things you can do on your homeowner's policy, all kinds of things. All right, let's talk social media for just a minute because this is something that was actually very challenging for me. Getting in front of the camera, I get asked a lot, you look so comfortable in front of the camera, you know, were you, is this comfortable for you or do you feel like, is it really hard to video? Um, yeah, at first I had to be coaxed by my husband to actually start a YouTube channel. I was very resistant for a long time. He kept encouraging me saying, you need to get out there. You need to let people know who you are. Um, you need to show people what you're doing and teach them. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to happen. Um, I am very outgoing. However, I'm a little bit shy. So putting myself out there was a little scary, but now I love it because I love what I do. I love the interaction that I have with everyone that I get to interact with. I love helping, teaching. So for me now, it's really exciting. I love doing YouTube. Now, as far as other social media platforms go, and, and I'm still getting my feet wet. I mean, I'm kind of on the younger side as far as my growth, but my Instagram is probably my strongest social media. How do I get that following? Organic growth, I can tell you, in any social media platform is not easy. It takes a while. It, you have to just get yourself out there, put yourself out there, let people get to know you, your product. Oh, it's tough, you, you know. Um, sure, do we all want to grow overnight? Yeah, it's just like anything else. Of course we want that instantly, but you know, it has taken a lot of time and effort and I pay attention to my social media platforms every day. It's a huge part of my business. Big question. Are my videos sponsored? Well, if they're sponsored, you're going to know it because it will say this video will contain sponsored content. Yes, some of my videos have been sponsored. What does that mean? That means that possibly the products that I'm using in the video were given to me by that company. They were free. I didn't purchase them. You do need to disclose that in your videos on YouTube. So if 
I have had sponsored content, you'll know. How do you get sponsored content? That is a great question. That's something that early, early on, I started researching, putting out there, asking. Here's what I'm gonna tell you, ask. Ask, ask a company, because without asking the question, you'll never know the answer. Now, a lot of times I got no's. No, I'm sorry, we're not gonna give you anything free right now, you're not big enough. And that's a little disheartening, but that should allow you to go ahead and think, okay, well, I just have to grow. That's what I did. So, you know, there are companies that will cater to smaller influencers. There's cater, there's ones that will only cater to the larger hundreds of thousands, um, you know, follower type influencers. So you just have to ask. Um, I have found some absolutely wonderful companies to work with. You just with. have to ask. I started putting myself out there even though I hardly had any type of a following because usually when you're asking for freebies, they want to look at your social media statistics and I got no's. I got a lot of no's, you guys, but you can't let no stop you. You just have to continue on. Um, as you grow, companies will see that and you can go back to them and say, hey, I've grown. I'm three times the size. I think it would benefit us both. So, you know, there's things like that that you can do to go ahead and get sponsored content, whether it be, you know, here on YouTube or if you're just trying to do some posts on Instagram, you want some free paint, you want to try something out. So it's all about networking and reaching out and not being afraid that you might get an no. Right, here's no. a question I got about... A money, money seems to be a question that people ask a lot about, and, and it's fine, I understand. You're curious whether or not you can actually do this and make money, but I got a question is, what was the most expensive piece I've ever sold? Um, the most expensive piece I've ever sold was $995. It was a buffet from the 1920s era, and it was a stain, paint, and glaze project. It was absolutely beautiful, and that was probably my most expensive piece. I try to keep my pieces at a reasonable price so that I can move them rather quickly. Um, I don't want to sit on inventory for 30 days because I do this full time. I need to be able to have money continually flowing. So my pieces are usually very well priced, which brings me to my next question. How do I sell my pieces? I sell my pieces on my website, my Facebook business page, my local Facebook groups, marketplace, and that's about it. I don't do any offer up or very little do I do Craigslist because I just don't generate sales from either one of those places. And what I do generate is a lot of, will you take half? And no, I don't. Do I negotiate? No, I don't. Uh, my prices are very fair and firm. And that's what I tell people. Uh, if I'm going to have a sale, if I am looking to move some inventory that maybe I can't get rid of or have had a long time, yep, I will put it on sale. So, but I don't negotiate. It's it's only a matter of when I decide to discount a piece is when I decide. Where do I find my pieces? The same place I sell my pieces. Um, Facebook, local groups, Facebook marketplace. That's usually like my biggest. I do search on Craigslist and I do search on OfferUp for pieces. Um, I get probably about 10% of them from OfferUp, maybe about 10% of them from Craigslist and the rest come from either um, Facebook or uh, a lot of people that know me and know that I do this as a business will contact me. So I get a lot of people that will contact me and ask me if I want certain pieces. Do I get paid by companies? The answer, yes, if I do something for it. For an example, uh, I have a pair of shoes that I bought a long time ago and I was an affiliate for the company because I really liked the shoes. They're Omega Walk shoes, if you're wondering. And they reached out and asked if I would do a commercial spot for them for their social media. And as a customer who liked the shoes, somebody who's on my feet all day. And yeah, so yes, they did pay me for that, just like any other job. If I do something for a company, then yes, they pay me. All right, so when I'm selling my pieces, do I advertise? Yes, absolutely. Yes, a thousand percent. Um, I learned a while ago that without the advertising, um, I just wasn't getting the visibility that I needed. And 
So I thought, okay, I'm setting an advertising budget every month. I max that budget out and I advertise my pieces. What do I mean by that? Well, I boost my ads or take ads out on Facebook. Every time I put a piece up for sale, I am advertising that sale. Do I advertise my custom work? No, I do not. Custom work, where does that come from? It comes from word of mouth. It comes from referral from you know previous customers. Um, it does come from when I sell a piece, somebody sees it and says, oh, by any chance, do you paint other people's pieces? That's something I get asked all the time by people. And the answer is always yes. I send them the information and then we go through the quoting process. Do I have anybody that helps me do anything like a virtual assistant? No. I do everything myself. I do all my own videos. I do my own editing. I do all my own painting, all of my own accounting, all of my own website. The list goes on. No, I don't. I probably should at some point because there is a lot. And yes, I do have an accounting system that I do use. It is QuickBooks in case you're wondering. Uh, I get a questions about that a lot is, you know, it's really important to, even if you aren't doing this for a full-time business, it's really important to keep track because for your own personal well-being, you need to know your profit. Well, the only way you're gonna know that is to keep track of it. So um, yes, I do everything myself, but that may soon change because it's becoming quite a bit. All right, favorite paints. What are my favorite paints? All right, well, if you guys follow me, you already probably know the answer to this question. However, I'm gonna tell you. Fusion Mineral Paints, General Finishes Milk Paint, The Chippy Barn is a really good one, Country Chic. All of those paints are in my normal rotation. Some I use more than others. And some, I just kind of, what makes me choose one versus the other? Well, there's so many paints on the market, you guys, and each one has something special about it. And so there's just different times where I will use certain paints than others. And then it's just like anything else. We get into a habit and we just go for the same paint and we kind of have to remind ourselves, wait, there's other things to use. So um, those are kind of probably my top paints. A newer one that just came out that I tried was Melange. I just recently did a video on that one too. So if you haven't seen it, I saw that paint circulating around the internet with a lot of other paint influencers and I tried it and I really, really liked it. So those are probably the ones that I use most frequently and they are my favorites. Do I top coat everything? No, I do not. If I'm using a paint that has a top coat built into it, then it's optional and I leave it up to the customer if they want an additional top coat on it or sometimes it's just knowing like certain colors or certain pieces, high traffic, highly used pieces, I'm gonna absolutely top coat all the time. So it kind of depends on the piece. I do not top coat every time. Am I a brand ambassador to any particular company? No, I am not. At this time, I am not. And what is a brand ambassador if you don't know? That is where typically you enter a contract with a certain company to use their products. Sometimes their products only. Sometimes they will allow you to use other products. A lot of times they'll have different tiers, but no, I am not currently a brand ambassador for any particular paint company. What is the thing that I love most about what I do? Oh, that's a hard one. Um, I would say for one, being my own boss. That is probably one of the best things. But at the same time, it can be one of the hardest things because earlier the question at, was asked, do I do everything myself? Yeah, so it can be one of those things that's you know a blessing and a curse at the same time. So, but I would have to say working for myself, being my own boss, but doing something I'm passionate about, doing something I love to do. Listen, I spent 18 years doing a job that was fabulous for so many reasons. One, I got to work with my dad. Two, um, my son is 19 years old. I got to raise my son as if I had all this free time because I worked on my own schedule. I was an independent appraiser for 18 years. So I didn't, I wasn't locked into going to an office. So for that, I'm thankful. I think half the people that probably saw me didn't even think I worked because I was always available for my son growing up. Um, so 
but the difference was I wasn't in love with what I was doing. I wasn't passionate about what I was doing. And there's just something different about waking up every day and being passionate about what you do, being challenged by what you do. It's not all roses, guys. There are times when I come out here and I'm like burned out. There are times when I come out here and I don't want to look at another piece. And you know, those are the times where you just take off a little bit of time. And you can do that when you're on your own. You are your own boss. All right, you guys, well, that is it. We are at the end of the video. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for submitting your questions to support this video. If you are not subscribed, please go hit that subscription button so that you guys can get all of my newest and latest videos as soon as they're released and hit that post notification bell so you know when they're coming out. Thank, Thank you for being subscribers and continuing to support my YouTube channel. If you have any positive comments or other questions, put them down below. I will always answer your questions as I love engaging with you guys and I'll catch you on the next video. Thanks.